This is my second burger. Okay, I lied, it's my fourth. Here are 10 more of the most harmful foods people keep eating. Sometimes the things we like to eat the most are often the ones we should probably stay away from. Stay away from me. Stay away from me. Hot dogs. My hot dog! Almost everybody loves a good hot dog once in a while. It's one of America's most famous dishes, after all. However, even eating that one lonesome hot dog could have a lot of negative effects on your body that you might not even be aware of. Of course, we all know that hot dog sausages are not, let's say, all natural. This is not natural. We've been told for ages that we shouldn't expect anything other than fake and processed ingredients that wouldn't bring us any source of nutrients whatsoever. And that's more than accurate. In order to keep hot dog sausages looking fresh, enhance the color, and stay preserved for longer, they have to be modified to contain nitrates and other chemical additives. These chemicals have been linked with many health risks, including high blood pressure, heart disease, and some forms of cancer. Hot dogs are normally high in saturated fats filled with sodium and overall should probably never be consumed. Never again! Never! Yes, hot dogs are super unhealthy, but that's not even the worst part. Most processed meat, like hot dog sausages, are made up of the leftover, otherwise unused cuts, which is then blended together. So next time you feel like eating a hot dog, maybe just don't. Certain fish. Who do you see eating a filet of fish? Somebody on the edge of death with a black coffee. Fish is one of the healthiest foods we can get. As a kid, you were probably told time and again how important it was to finish your plate of fish because it would help make you smarter. That trick always worked, and it wasn't all lies. Most fish are full of vitamins and omega-3 and are a great source of protein and fiber. Even the American Heart Association recommends eating fish at least two times per week as part of a healthy diet. If you know how to choose the right kind of fish, all those benefits will be yours. It's mine! All mine! However, if you choose poorly, you might end up bringing on some really bad health issues. Let's take swordfish, for example. Swordfish contains a lot of protein, but it also contains high levels of mercury. Actually, they have been found to have the highest mercury levels in any of the larger edible fish. Mercury is a potent human neurotoxin that can be fatal to those who are pregnant, people of childbearing age, and young children. Both the FDA and the EPA have recommended against eating this fish and other mercury-dense fish like king mackerel, marlin, and albacore tuna. So next time you want to eat some fish, take the time to choose it carefully. Well, what's the best fish here? What's your favorite fish? I don't eat fish. I only like spaghetti. Ice cream. I want ice cream! What do ice cream cones, ice cream cakes, and ice cream sandwiches have in common? They're all frozen desserts we wish we could eat every single day. You had a bad breakup? Get out the ice cream. You had a good grade? Ice cream! You just feel like eating ice cream? Then go get it. Any reason is good reason to eat the best frozen treat ever. Which is why it can become a bit of a problem sometimes. A little early for ice cream. <laughs> it's never too early for ice cream, Jim. You see, people tend to forget that even though ice cream is delicious and doesn't seem as sugary as chocolate cake, it's still in the dessert category. Category, meaning you aren't safe from all the sugar, calories, and fat that your favorite ice cream brand contains. Most ice cream is high in calories and added sugar, and the little nutrients it provides cannot compensate. Even low-fat or no-sugar-added products that are often promoted as healthier usually contain the same number of calories as regular ice cream. Ice cream is highly processed and includes ingredients like artificial flavors and additives, which have been proven to cause some negative health effects. Since ice cream is so tasty, it can also be extremely easy to overindulge and exceed your daily calorie intake. So Mario, you got brain freeze? No, I got brain wave. Anything fried, grilled, or broiled. At most, we serve good old-fashioned home cooking. Deep fried to perfection. Which doctor has ever said that eating a steaming plate of fried chicken was good for your arteries? Probably none. Basically, if you see something that's been deep fried, chances are you shouldn't go near it. And somebody bring me something deep fried and smothered in chocolate. When something is fried, it becomes more calorific because it absorbs the fat of the oils. And eating fat-laden foods can increase blood pressure and cause high cholesterol, which are risk factors for heart disease. 
You might think that grilling your food would be better, but even then, you would be wrong. Grilling is actually among the unhealthiest cooking methods, but people tend to overlook it and focus on the frying. Exposing meat to high-temperature cooking can cause several harmful chemicals to form, like heterocyclic amines and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. These two, in particular, are known to cause cancer in animals and are suspected to increase the risk in humans as well. The same goes for broiling the food. It might be quicker to broil than to bake, but in the long run, those extra minutes will be worth it. If you're not ready to say goodbye to your precious chicken or mighty steak, there are plenty of alternative cooking methods you can try if you're concerned about your health. Boiling, stewing, and even steaming are all fine ways to cook your food without putting your health at risk. I'm not used to seeing the fish part of the fish. Usually it's hidden inside a stick. Frozen pizza, or just pizza. Hey, well, as far as I'm concerned, progress peak with frozen pizza. By now, you're probably thinking, well, if I can't even have pizza, then what's the point of even eating anymore? And you would be right. Pizza is so delicious. It's probably one of the world's most popular junk foods ever. No matter the country, they've probably got their very own version of a pizza. Do they even have pizza in Canada? Yes. It's puffier and it's sweet. It's called Manitoba sauce cake. But unless you miss the key word here, pizza is a junk food. And junk food is made with ingredients that are somewhat less than desirable. Stuff like highly refined dough and heavily processed meat is usually the star of the greasy pie. They're also often high in calories, sugar, and fats. And if you choose to add that extra cheese, beware of the extra calories it comes with. What would you like in your pizza pie? Extra cheese! While your takeout pizza might not be the healthiest thing to eat, frozen pizzas are even worse. Along with all the harmful ingredients from regular pizza, the party is joined by numerous food additives and higher sodium levels. The salt is the real culprit here, as the majority of frozen pizzas have more than half the daily recommended intake. A high salt diet means higher blood pressure, raising the risk for heart disease, stroke, kidney failure, and other potential health problems. Frozen pizza might be one of the easiest and cheapest meals you can make, but is it really worth the health hazard? Bagels. Uh. They're called bagels. Uh, I lived in New York, Troy. I know what a bagel is. There is nothing like a good old bagel with cream cheese to start off your day right. Or better yet, a BLT sandwich made with sliced bagels instead of bread. A BLT is lettuce, tomato, and... Bagels are just yummy, no matter what you eat them with. However, you might be surprised, or not, to hear that they might not be the healthiest thing to eat for breakfast, and they might be causing you a lot more harm than you thought. First of all, the average bagel will have about 350 calories, that is, before any toppings are added, which is a lot for one tiny round pastry. But that's not the only reason why bagels shouldn't be your go-to breakfast order. They are also made with refined white flour, meaning they are high in refined carbs. For those who don't know, refined carbs have been stripped of almost all fiber, vitamins, and minerals and are considered empty calories. I'm empty inside! <laughs> they are usually digested more quickly than regular carbs and have a higher glycemic index, which can lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar and insulin levels after a meal. Refined white flour foods have also been linked to weight gain, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. But don't worry, not every bagel is out to get you. If you go for one made with 100% whole grains, you should be able to enjoy your bagel without a care in the world. Sports drinks. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. After a long run or a hearty workout, nothing feels better than an ice-cold bottle of your favorite sports drink. Whether it's Gatorade or Powerade, there's a brand and a flavor for everyone. However, if we're being completely honest, most people don't only drink sports drinks when they've engaged in physical activity, which is where part of the problem begins. Sports drinks are advertised as being a quick source of energy thanks to all of the electrolytes they contain. And they are, for the most part. What are electrolytes? Do you even know? Electrolytes are minerals that maintain your body's ionic balance. This balance is essential for nerve, muscle, and brain functioning. They can help replace what we lose during long durations of exercise, especially in the heat. But if you just drink one while lying on the couch, binging your favorite show, it might have the opposite effect on your body. While a sip or two might quench your thirst for a while, the high amount of sugar found in these drinks is too high to be consumed while resting. 
Getting extra sugar and sodium throughout the day for less active people is neither recommended nor necessary. Sports drinks have even been linked to weight gain and tooth decay, especially in children. So while sports drinks can help you stay hydrated, it's best to only drink them when needed. I'm definitely going to need some kind of sports drink. Otherwise, you might be looking at some undesirable problems that could have been avoided. Cheese in a can. What do you think is coursing through my veins right now? Cheese whiz. Okay, this one is pretty obvious. Why, oh why, would a weird, squishy, neon bright substance be anything else but harmful to you? While cheese in a can is not healthy in the slightest, it never really claimed to be so. This highly processed fake cheese has quite a reputation, both good and bad, throughout the world. A lot of people love it, despite its obvious unnatural ingredients list, and don't really the question why everybody else says they should probably steer clear of the stuff. Well, we're here to tell those people exactly what's wrong with cheese in a can. For starters, the cheese isn't really cheese at all. In most cases, only about 50% what's in the can is actually cheese. I feel so betrayed. The rest is just a bunch of ingredients like salt, food dyes, preservatives, extra dairy, emulsifiers, all added to make it look the way it does. All of these are then added to the melted, pasteurized cheese before being converted into a spray. By the time all the extra ingredients are in, the faint amount of actual cheese has already lost most of its natural flavor and texture. These are added to make the cheese last longer on the shelf. Some cheese in a can doesn't even need to be refrigerated. It can just sit there in your pantry forever. Sorcery. Please do yourself a favor. Don't buy cheese that can stay out and about for ages and go with real cheese. Cheese is healthy in moderation, but not when it is sprayed out of a can. Instant oatmeal. Okay, who wants syrup and who wants cinnamon sugar? I want oatmeal. You've probably heard the enormous praise oats receive from dietitians. Packed with beneficial fiber and protein, vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids, oats are practically the picture of health. There are even studies that show how eating whole grain oats can help control blood sugar, lower the amount of fat in the blood, and even promote weight loss. Seriously, you get a lot of advantages when you eat a bowl of oatmeal. However, these health benefits come with whole grain oats, not instant oats. If you get a bowl of instant oats, you're most likely getting a serving of added sugar, salt, and artificial coloring, rather than vitamins. That's because instant oat manufacturers tend to remove the oats fiber to give their meal a better texture and help it cook faster. Time is money, my friend. Plus, many companies use fillers such as flour or add sugar and sugary dried fruits to their oats. Sure, it might make the taste better, but it loses all of its healthful elements. And one of the biggest problems with instant oatmeal is when most people eat it, they aren't eating it plain. They'll add milk, sugar, and a lot of add-ins, which basically turns this formerly healthy breakfast into a sweet dessert. Put a little brown sugar on it, you put some cinnamon, put a little honey, you whatever. Guys. If instant oatmeal is your savior on busy mornings, don't worry. There are other ways to turn oatmeal into a fast food without having to resort to instant. Try making some overnight oatmeal or even crockpot oats to save some time and gain on some health advantages. Agave nectar. We're gonna run out of honey, and I am not using agave like some idiot. Everybody knows the consequences too much sugar in your diet can have on your body, and many people have tried to fill their sugar void with artificial sweeteners, which, more often than not, end up being even worse than sugar itself. That's why a lot of people turn to agave nectar, a sweetener derived from the agave plant. It's usually marketed as a healthy alternative to sugar. However, these health claims are nothing but empty promises. There is a reason why agave nectar doesn't cause the same blood sugar spikes as table sugar does. It's because of its high amounts of fructose, a good 85% to be exact. Oh, fructose. fructose is a sugar that does not directly affect blood glucose levels, but it does affect a lot of other things. Sure, agave nectar claims to be suitable for people with diabetes, but it can do so much more damage elsewhere. For instance, it can completely mess up your metabolic health by contributing to insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, and so on. Eating high fructose foods can also put extra strain on the liver to convert these sugars into fats, which may lead to added body fat. Look at me, I'm a big fat slob! You want to be really healthy? Try stevia instead for a natural and calorie-free alternative. 
stick around. Just tap or click another great video. Leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell to join our notification squad.